Good morning, everybody. Wait a minute for everybody to get on here. It's early, uh, middle of summertime, so I know sometimes it takes a minute for people to get on. Good morning, Cindy. How are you doing? Hope you're having a good morning so far. Alright. Outstanding. Well, if you're going to have a morning, it should be an outstanding one, right? It's the day the Lord has made. We'll get started here in just about a minute or two. Good morning, Lou and Carolyn. I failed to turn my light on in my room this morning. Hold on a minute. That probably doesn't help too much. I already had an outside light on. Good morning. Yes, it's an outstanding morning. That it is. The best mornings are the ones where you wake up. There we go. I had a, um, a person try to call me just now on my phone. My phone's what I'm using for the video. So I had that little interruption in the video because of that. So good, good. I think we'll get started. I'm going to just kind of open in prayer and then we'll um, get into it this morning. Um, I don't think it will be as long as normal. Um, I am going to highlight the entire chapter, I'm gonna, uh, but I'm going to you know stick on a, a few different things But um, of Acts chapter 11. But let's pray before we get started. Lord, we thank you for the time we have together this morning, uh, time we have to worship you, to, to spend time in prayer, but also to get in your word a little bit, even though it's not super deep or super crazy, it's Lord, still a good time for us to be able to talk about you and, and be in your word, Lord. So we just pray that you would bless this time, that you would teach us, that you would encourage us, Lord, you'd help us to walk um, in you uh, just at a level that is um, noticeable by the people around us, that they would see you in us, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Ron. So I'm going to get started um, this morning. Um, we're in Acts chapter 11, so we've um, we've been having a good time so far. So we're gonna we're gonna continue to have that good time. Matter of fact, me and Cassie were talking. I, I can't confirm yet for sure, but you'll get a message if we do it. But we're talking about doing um, still doing live next week from Maui um, together. We would do it, and um, we'll just see how it goes because it's like a six-hour time difference, and so like at 10 o'clock it'll be 4 a.m. there. So if we do it, it might not be live, but we'll see what we can do. Um, see what we can do to make it happen. But um, Acts chapter 11, we're going to start with verse number 1. So it says, Now the apostles and the brothers and the sisters who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. And when Peter came to Jerusalem, the Jewish believers took issue with him, saying, you went to the uh, to uncircumcised men and ate with them. So they're basically complaining that Peter went. Now, if you remember last week, week we talked about the, the passage in chapter 10 where um, Peter has an encounter with the Lord and he gives him instruction to wait on the three men who are coming to him on behalf of Cornelius and um, the Italian Cornelius. And that Cornelius also had an encounter with God and he was sent by God to Peter, um, a 30-mile journey to go to Peter, even though he knew that you know, Peter is a, a Jew and, and a believer. Um, he, he might not be accepted, but he went anyway. He was obedient, and they had this really cool just experience. And then the Holy Spirit, um, the, 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 I guess you call it the uh, Gentile Pentecost, so to speak, where the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles. And so this is what they're discussing. And what's happening is there, the, Jesus, uh, Peter comes back, and <laughs> these people are complaining to Peter that you went to the uncircumcised people, the Gentiles, and you were preaching to them and spend, spending time with them and eating with them and um so that, that's where this conversation ha starts. And in the next several verses after this, Peter begins to explain to them, um, like you should have to give an explanation, but he had to um, give an explanation of why he went and did what he did. He explained this entire encounter with God, he explained Cornelius had an encounter with God, that they came and connected, and that when they share, shared, the Holy Spirit fell on all these people. Um, so it took an explanation for them to understand it. 
um, even though they were initially against it. And it kind of reminded me, I have, a, I, I was, um, when I was in Jamestown, New York, if you, you, know, you don't know Jamestown, New York, probably, but it's the west side of the state of New York, and we were living there, we're near, near Niagara Falls, Buffalo, it was a t the city only had 35,000 people in it, but there was a big lake that was 22 miles long, it was a really long lake, and uh, it's called it Chautauqua Lake, and we lived on one side of the lake, and when you drive all the way to the other side of the lake to go to almost anything you wanted to go to, so you had to drive like 15 minutes around the lake, and, um, but on the drive from where I was at, you'd go through the city and the city there considered a, a drug highway, so to speak, a lot of a gateway for drugs and stuff would happen, especially opio, opio, uh, opio, uh, opioids, you know, like uh, heroin and whatnot were huge in that area. And it was an inner city type feel to it. And um, so a lot of drug houses, things like that, it's like an inner city, the town, that city had 35,000 people. Um, so we're, we were in that area and we were doing, um, I had a bunch of students, youth and young adults, and we were knocking on doors and inviting people to an outreach we were doing. And um, one of the girls, grandma called her, which her grandma goes to her church, and she gives a call to her, and we're, she's talking to her on speakerphone, and then she finally asked where we're at, and we told her where we were at, and she literally told us on the phone, she said, I don't, we don't need to be ministering to those people, we need to not be over there. And um, it kind of reminded me of that when I heard this, it's almost like Peter was going to the other side of the, of the, of the lake, the other side of the track, so to speak, and ministering to those people. And um, of course, we, we didn't listen, we continued to do what we did because everybody needs to hear about Jesus and we're not any better than anybody else. Um, it, it was one of those situations where um, a heart wasn't right and it was not um, it was not the people we were ministering to. It was the person who didn't want us to go there. So um, Peter had the same situation here. It was automatically like this is this whole gospel that we've been preaching, this whole outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's, in, it's not all inclusive. It's just for us. It's, it's an exclusive thing. So Peter, why are you going and talking to the Gentiles? And so Peter explains everything to them. And it's once he explained everything to them, the Bible says down to verse number um, 18, that when they heard this, they all quieted down and glorified God, saying, well, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance that leads to life. So, so it didn't take long for them to figure it out. I, I, my, my prayer is it doesn't take long for all of us to figure it out, that there's not a single person who's not worthy um, of hearing the gospel because if they weren't worthy, Jesus wouldn't have died, and he's, he, he died for every one of us. So... Um, and so we, we should never be in the mindset of not those people. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, but, um, but it's important that we have that mindset. So we're going to go down to verse number 19. So Acts 11, chapter, verse, chapter, uh, Acts chapter 19, verse number 11. So then those who were scattered because of the persecution that occurred in connection with Stephen made their way to Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except for the Jews alone. So there was a group of them that just went to the Jews alone anyway. Um, but then there were those, some of them, men of Cyprus and of Cyrene, who came to Antioch and began speaking to the Greeks as well, preaching the good news of the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a large number, um, and a large, and a large number who believed turned to the Lord. So they went, um, he mentions those who went just specifically exclusively to the Jews, and then he mentioned those that went to the Greeks, and then he finishes it by talking about the testimony of those who went to the Greeks. Um, so they went doing something they normally had not done as a result of what they just seen happen with Peter. So the Peter's encounter with God that led him to allow, to open the door to him to be able to speak to the Greeks or to those who were Gentiles, um, now led to a testimony that when he shared it with them, it opened up it opened up their hearts and their minds to where now they went and they preached to the Greeks. And when they preached to the Greeks, they had these crazy just amounts of people coming to the Lord as we've seen all throughout the book of Acts. But then it says in verse number 22, the news about them reached to the heirs of the church in Jerusalem and they sent Barnabas, Barnabas off to Antioch. When you are doing the work of the Lord and you're serving the Lord and the Holy Spirit is moving in you, and um, and you're doing the right thing. You're not you're not excluding certain people, but you're going and doing the right thing. And God begins not only to, to God's going to do a work that not only changes those lives there, but people are going to hear about it, and they're gonna they're gonna come to you, right? They're gonna come to you. And that's exactly what happened here. Is that because they were serving the Lord and doing the right thing, that God um, the testimony of what was happening was reaching all the way back to Jerusalem. And when that happened, they sent Barnabas um, to Antioch, and then it says in verse twenty uh, three. Then when he arrived, he witnessed the grace of God. He rejoiced and began to encourage them all with resolute heart to remain true to the Lord, 
for he was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and of faith and consider kind of considerable number were added to the Lord. So he goes there and he, he witnesses it for himself. Slowly but surely you see this happening where just everybody starts beginning to see that God, um, he's moving not just within the Jews, but now he's moving within the Gentiles. And, and it's, this, it, it takes a little bit of extra, you know, doing something you're not used to. Um, a lot of times Jewish people felt um, they were very exclusive. So even to talk to um, Pharisees, not Pharisees, but um, Gentiles um, all throughout the region was not a normal thing but especially when it came to um, the religious things. And so here we are seeing them, um, Holy Spirit moving. So after all these people were being added to the Lord, uh, it says this, and he left for Tarsus, meaning he, meaning um, Barnabas, to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And for an entire year, they met with the church and taught considerable, and taught and considerable, a considerable number of people. And disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Um, so what I want to what I want to sit on for just a second. Um, so first of all, you see what happened. We we'll go back. We will just review a little bit. Peter has this encounter with God in Acts chapter ten. Cornelius, the Italian, has this encounter with God in chapter ten that links them together. It brings them together. Then because they began to work together, the Holy Spirit falls on the Gentiles, which was not the norm. And um, the Jewish men who came to Jesus were not used to this, and so they questioned it in the beginning of Acts chapter, Acts chapter eleven. After they questioned that, Peter explained everything to them. Um, and, and we know for sure at least some of them at first definitely caught on because they went and preached um, the gospel to Jew, to Greeks after this. So they went and preached, and the miracles were happening. Barnabas comes. Barnabas comes, and he spends time um, with them. He sees the good things that are happening. He goes finds Paul, and they did something that is very important because we're not called to go make converts. We're called to make disciples. And so what happens is Paul and um, Barnabas come back, and they begin the process of teaching all of these people who are Greek um, in, in the way of the Lord. And it's kind of one of those things where it's probably a very unique situation because they probably were not as familiar with the law and things of that nature as what the Jews were. So you almost had to um, do an entire, like, because we know that in this time period, even these early Christians, they still read the law and studied the law is all they had. They didn't have scriptures like we have now. And so they learned it by heart. So now you're starting over with people who were Greek and who don't have any idea what's happening. They don't really know the law or anything. And so they, they made it an intentional purpose. They stopped everything they were doing because God was moving in the Gentiles. They stopped everything they were doing. They said, we're going to go here for a full year. We're going to make disciples. We're going to train them. We're going to teach them. And um, so it's not just important that you go and you reach lost people. Um, and, and when I say reach lost people, I mean all the lost people, not just the people who um, look like you or smell like you or, look, you know, or, or have the same demographics as you have, but I mean all people. And then once you do that, we have to spend time uh, maturing them in the Lord, helping them grow, helping them figure things out and learn things through things, navigate through a lot of different things that have to happen. Part of making a disciple is helping them to kind of uproot themselves from a lot of bad um, behaviors, a lot of bad past things, a lot of things that they dealt with. Um, that they need to overcome. And so you start teaching and, and equipping. But I, I love the way that this ended where it says, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And the word Christians, when they, when they called Christians, um, when they called them Christians in Scripture, it actually was not like, uh, at least from the people who called them that, it was not considered to be like a good thing. You were, it's not like, oh, I'm a Christian, yay. It was more like a derogatory term. It meant little Christ, a little, little Jesus, so to speak. But the idea was, is that they're mocking them. And they're mocking them, though, for something that um, I think is super important. They're mocking them because they look like Jesus. They had the appearance of. The things that they were doing were just like Jesus was. And, of course, these people were, would reject Jesus as well, um, probably during this time period. So when that happened, um, they're mocking them. So some mocked them. Many came to the Lord. But they were calling them little Christians, recognizing that they were they were like Jesus. Recognizing that they were like Jesus is such an important thing. Acts chapter 4, verse 13 says, Now they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men. So they're uneducated and they're untrained. They observed that people observed this. And then they said they were amazed and began to recognize them as have, have been, having been with Jesus. Similar type of idea. They saw that um, in, in Acts chapter for you saw that Peter and John were just normal people. They weren't educated. How are they? How are they confounding the wise the way they are? Right? How are they doing all the things that they're doing? They're not educated. Um, they're they're not the kind of people who you expect to be able to do what they're doing. Yet here they are doing it. They're doing it anyway. And as they begin to recognize that, they begin they begin to recognize one thing: these men had been with Jesus. Um, I feel like um, 
the message for today is this. Let's get so close to the Lord that when we walk away from his presence, that people recognize that we've been with him. That when we go to every person, all people, doesn't matter who they are, that literally the, the, the light of Christ is in us and it's shining out of us. And we're, we're seeing the Lord move so much in our life that, that people who don't know Jesus, who don't have that connection with him, don't have a relationship, even those who have rejected him, that they'll notice and recognize that we have been with Jesus. Um, what, a, what an honor that would be, right? That people just suddenly start recognizing, not that you go to church, but this person has been with Jesus. I can tell there's something different about them. That the words that they speak have some validity. They have something behind them. Um, that this person would not normally be able to talk like this or do this, but because they've been with Jesus, they can. Um, that, for me, that's my prayer, Lord, is that when I'm with you, that I'm when I'm praying, when I'm that when I walk away from your presence, that the people who I encounter will know that I've been with you. That they'll they'll be able to tell that I've been with you. Not because I have to convince them. But because it's obvious, it's like Moses when he went to the other side of the mountain, right? And he had that kind of with God, he came back and he was glowing. Um, and he had this glow about him that, that everybody could tell that he, the, the Lord shined on him. And in the same way, the Bible talks about in the New Testament, we see a lot about them changing the countenance of people. Um, when you're in the presence of the Lord, he does change your countenance. You know, he changes things about you that make him recognizable in you. And, um, and that's what we want as a church. We want him to be recognizable in us, that when people see us, that they see Jesus. And when people see Jesus in us, they surrender to him because of how good he is. Amen. And that's what we want to see happen. And I, and I believe God's calling the church to all people and to minister to every single people group, anybody you encounter. But we have to be filled with his power and we have to be, um, he has to be the one that's seen. He has to be the one that's seen. When they look at us, they're like, I don't know how you became this, but you did. And it's a testimony. Amen. Amen. Yes, Cindy. May the fragrance of Christ be all over us in Jesus' name. That's what we want. We want his presence to rub off on us. And, and, uh, and I want to carry his presence with me. When I get done with prayer, I want to leave the room. And I want him just to come with me wherever I go so that it's so clear um, and so obvious to those around me. It's not always going to be perfect, by the way. We're always going to have our moments. And um, I, have, I have moments like, what, like once or twice a day minimum. So, you know, but at the same time... Um, because I try to get myself right and try to stay focused on the Lord, my prayer is that he just continues to show himself in me. And um, I pray the same for you guys as well. But um, that is the main thing I wanted to speak about today. That's really the main point I had for today. Um, I knew it wouldn't be real long today. Um, I, have, I have a lot to do today because we are leaving tomorrow morning early. So I have to drive all the way um, an hour to pick up Cassie's mom and nephews to bring them back here because they're staying with their kids for the week. And so, um, you know, my dog won't, won't survive if I leave the dog with my kids. So um, so I have to go do that today. So I knew it was going to be a little bit shorter today, but I still wanted to make sure we did this. And then um, also encouraging everybody, if we have prayer tonight at three locations, we are still hosting this week, but we're not hosting next week But because um, we'll be gone. But um, so if you get a chance to get to prayer tonight, get to prayer. Um, I know we got busy lives, but amen to that. Without trying, without, with no glory to be given to us. Amen. That's what we want. Jesus magnified, Jesus seen. It's funny when people see Jesus for who he is, changes everything. When they see us still, um, so often, um, we muddy the waters. And so that's what we want. We want him to clear the waters so everybody can see him. Amen. We're going to get into prayer. If you have any prayer requests, um, you can just go ahead and post them in the uh, chat. And we will agree in prayer. Um, yes. Also pray for a few members who got poison ivy helping a neighbor with the yard. That's always lovely. Poison ivy is not, not a very comfortable thing. We'll keep, we're going to continue praying for Barb. And like I said already, Carolyn, if you need anything, just always reach out. And uh, uh, I know it's really rough what she's going through, especially after what she had to deal with yesterday. So um, let's um, let's pray for her first. And I'll pray for Barb and for those with Poison Ivy. Um, Lord, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you that, Lord, when we enter into your presence, into your courts, and we, are, we spend real sincere time with you, allowing you to work on our hearts and in our lives and our minds, um, that you change us and that when we leave the room, you go with us and that everywhere we go, people can see you in us if we allow it, Lord. So I pray that would be the case, that we so surrender to you 
that just like these Christians who were who were mocked for looking like you, Lord, I pray that, that, that if that's what it takes, like if, if I don't, we don't care if we're mocked for looking like you, Lord, we just want to look like you. We want people to see us and see you in us. And so we pray that you would do that today in Jesus' name. Pray for Barb again, Lord. We just continue to intercede for her. We agree together, all of us who are online, we are, we are believing by faith that you are going to touch her body. Um, and Lord, we just believe that you're going to make her whole in Jesus' name. Um, so we just pray right now, all these issues she's having in the hospital, <laughs> Lord, the issues um, with her kidneys, pray that you touch her kidneys right now in Jesus' name. And with everything that's going on, that you just continue to give her comfort and peace and rest and confidence in you, that you have confidence in you still, no matter what she's facing, that she would have confidence in you at all times, trusting completely that you would touch her life and her body, Lord Jesus. Pray for those who've got poison ivy helping out a neighbor, Lord, and um, it's an uncomfortable thing. Um, I know it only lasts a little while, but Lord, I pray that you just give them the ability to, uh, that you cause those symptoms to subside, all the itchiness, all the different issues, Lord, right now. Um, as they were serving people in the process when it happened. So we pray that you would just touch their bodies right now in Jesus' name and just uh, that poison ivy be gone in Jesus' name. Uh, we pray right now for um, Don's seven sons, Evan and Colin. We just continue to pray for them and uh, that you just comfort them in their loss, Lord, and, and bring them peace right now. Um, Lord, I pray that they would just feel your comfort um, just every day. Lord, every day as they wake up and, and go on, that they would just feel your comfort, that you are with them, and that one day, um, if they're living for you, they will see their mom in glory. And um, it will be a wonderful day, Lord Jesus. So just give them comfort for that right now, Lord God. Um, we pray for Dan and his emotional issues and for salvation right now, Lord Jesus. Don't know the whole situation, but I know um, that salvation is the, the first thing. So we pray for salvation for Dan right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, that you'd speak to him and draw him close to you. That you would um, send others to him, Lord, that you'd just constantly be in his ear speaking and, and drawing him, Lord, that he would come to know you, that as he comes to know you, as he surrenders to you, Lord, all those emotional issues will begin to melt away as he begins to get close to you. So we just pray that you would do that in Jesus' name right now. Um, Lord, I pray right now for Cindy as you're seeking a doctor for um, a minor but long-standing medical issue, a medical condition. We just pray right now in Jesus' name that you would help her to figure this process out. First of all, we just pray for whatever that issue is to be gone in Jesus' name, that you would heal it in Jesus' name. There would be no need for a doctor. But, um, Lord, in, at, at the same time, that she would have um, the ability to navigate with wisdom from the Holy Spirit, that you would speak to her, that you would help her to know exactly what to do, what steps to do, what, who to talk to. And uh, But we just pray that you would touch her in this process and just help her through all of these decisions and, th and as well as just touching her body in Jesus' name. We pray. Uh, we pray for the upcoming ladies retreat that happens here in the next couple weeks we just pray right now for every single woman who goes that there would be an encounter with the holy spirit lord that you would transform lives that you would just bring them closer and more intimate with you than they ever have been before we pray for every single person as they walk through uh walk out of their cars and into the into the place where they're staying that they'd immediately feel your presence and there would be just an outpouring of your spirit there lord we just pray that you do that we pray right now for um deb um in Jesus' name, um, not knowing the situation, just pray that you would work on behalf of her right now, Lord, and that you would touch her body, her life, her everything, Lord, that you just bring her completely, make her completely whole in you, Lord Jesus, I pray right now. Um, and though we pray against um, every demonic force that would be in play when it comes to the retreat, anything trying to push back against it, push back against what you want to do. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name against those things that we we know and we recognize. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and principalities and high places. So we go to the high places in the spirit and we ask in Jesus' name that you would destroy every stronghold, every single work of the enemy, and that you would be glorified there. And all everything that needs to happen for that retreat, everything that needs to take place, all the things that you want to happen, that they would take place and Lord, lives will be changed. We pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for um, Megan and Caitlin. Lord, that you would make yourself real to them, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, that you'd give them a revelation of who you are, um, that they would 
come just right now, even where they're at, they, if they're at home or they're in bed, whatever, whatever it might be doing, if it has to be through dreams, if it has to be through visions or, or through somebody just speaking to them, either way, Lord, we pray that you would make yourself known to them, that you would soften their hearts to receive your word, to receive you, Lord Jesus. And I pray that you would do everything it takes to draw them to you. We pray the same thing over all of our, as we have these lists of kids and, and family members and grandkids and um, that we've been praying for. We pray for all of them, Lord, that you'd prepare their hearts, Lord. Draw their hearts right now to you. And I pray that their, their, their hearts, the soil of their hearts would be good ground right now to receive your word, to receive Jesus. And we just pray that you would draw them to you and they'd come to know you and um, just have that fresh revelation of you that changes their life, Lord. Pray for Linda B. And with breast cancer, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that you would touch her right now. Um, we, we know that cancer is the name below the name of Jesus. And we just continue to pray. Um, Lord, I've seen you on multiple occasions heal people from cancer. And I just pray in Jesus' name you do this again, Lord, right now, Jesus, with Linda, but also with Barb, Lord. We pray you touch their bodies, Lord, in Jesus' name. Um, and by the power of the blood of Christ, that there would be healing today in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray for also for um, our church body, for every single person who's a part of the Fisherman's Net and their families. Lord, we pray blessing on our lives. We pray that you would just kind of continually just show favor and blessing and your goodness, Lord. I pray that you would um, just continue to bring a fresh outpouring of your spirit into our lives and into our church on a daily basis. Lord, we want more of you. We want to encounter you in a new and amazing way, Lord, every single day. So we pray that every single day you'd pour out your spirit on every single person who's a part of the net and, and all their families, Lord. And that your blessing would be so overwhelming, Lord Jesus, that we would see your hand at work, that we'd be used by you in our workplaces and in our communities, that we'd be used by you within our families, and, and, and that you would just allow us to, to be your light in darkness, that you would allow us to be your hands and your feet, that we would be a blessing to those around us, Lord Jesus. We pray for just a supernatural outpouring of your spirit on our church and on our community. Also, we pray for that to be the case in your church in America and all around the country and all around the world. We pray for a revival and an outpouring of your spirit, Lord God. Um, we pray right now for Tim and for salvation, um, for his salvation first and then for a family situation, Lord. You know what's going on there. Um, Lord, you you love Tim. You've, you, you desire to have him walk with you. So we just pray that you would draw him to you and that he'd come to know you and that you'd work out every situation that needs to be worked out within his life, Lord, um, as he serves you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your we thank you for your power. We thank you for just how amazing you are, Lord Jesus. We thank you that there's nothing that's outside of your reach, that every single governmental leader that we have is not outside of your reach. So we pray for a revival within our government, Lord God. Uh, we pray right now for every person who is in Congress, every person who is in the Senate, those who are in the White House, um, those who are in our local governments, Lord God, that we would see an outpouring of your spirit and we see just tons and tons of people come to know you. Um, that they would just, uh, one after the other, just through whatever whatever way it takes, Lord, that they would just, we just begin to see um, the gospel preached in those places and that people would come to know you and it would change literally the tra uh, trajectory of this country, God, that you would be glorified and you would lead this nation, Jesus. Um, we thank you for that. We thank you for your amazing grace and your kindness to us, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. request here we go well we pray for this um, at Youth Haven Ranch we pray for the pancake breakfast this, this Saturday um, well we already know that uh Jeff can cook. So we, we know that, but we pray the food is better than ever, Lord Jesus. We pray that people come and there's it's a packed house of people that are there helping them to do what they need to do and, and, to, and to raise the funds they need to raise and just so you'd bless that time, Lord Jesus. And we pray that you just continue to help Youth Ranch to be an, a blessing to the kids who come and that they just continue to, to be able to be transformed and changed by that place, Lord God. We just pray you'd have your way with that, Lord God. I can agree with that, Denise. We'll pray for Lord, me and Cassie as we leave tomorrow morning. That, um, it would be the flights would be smooth. There would be no issues, and that um, we would get there and we'd have a great time of refreshing and uh, just kind of a great time together. Um, 
we didn't get that much time or together by ourselves. And so I pray this time would be just a blessing and refreshing in our relationship, but also for our kids while they're home. Lord, that you would bless them and that you'd help them to the house to stay in order. And uh, I pray that my house is not um, completely collapsed when we get home because of the little kids that are coming. So uh, we just pray that you'd just bless the entire time. Lord, we thank you for that. Yes, Lord. Amen. God is good. Thank you, Cindy. We're looking forward to it. I think that's it. I don't see any more prayer requests, but uh, be blessed. If you get a chance to go to, like I said, if you get a chance to go to prayer tonight, I know that um, um, at our home, and then there's still Grant Park, and then there's... Um, also, um, Sorrentino, so there's three locations. He is so good. That is true. Better than we can even comprehend, right? We can only, we, we like we talk, we say he's good, but um, so good is probably the better way to put it. <laughs> so he's so good. But yeah, if you get a chance to go to prayer tonight, go to prayer tonight um, and, and spend some time just praying and interceding with each other, for each other. Um, for your families, I feel like if we just continue to pray over um, each other and over all these things, like these things, you see this list and some we've been praying for for a while, but we're just going to continue to believe the Lord, right? We want to see God do miracles and signs and wonders and um, heal bodies and deliver people and bring people to salvation in our families. So we're just continue to pray for that. Um, have a blessed day. Enjoy your uh, afternoon. As of right now, it's still sunny outside. I think it's still going to rain a little bit later. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are having this problem, but I can't get my grass cut. Every time we get ready to have somebody go cut the grass, it starts raining. So um, it's an odd June. But um, anyway, we'll talk to you guys later. Love all of you. Have a blessed day. In Jesus' name.